Hi all, let's have a look at another amazing chess game in the chess nutshell. This game is a classic of John Cochrane versus Bonaji uh, Moshihunda. It was played in Calcutta, 1848. Uh, John Cochrane was born 1798, died 1878 at the age of 80 years old. He was a Scottish barrister and he became a leading London player in the early 19th century. In 1821 he went to France and played an odds match, uh, pawn and two moves against uh, Alexandre Louis Honoré Lebreton Despachez, and a level terms match against uh, Le Bourdonnais, and he lost both. Uh, he went to India in 1824 and remained there until his retirement in 1869, but he took leave 1841-43 and returned to London. During this period he played hundreds of casual games against Howard Staunton, losing the majority, and a match which he won against saint -Amand. His name is associated with a variation of the Petrov defence called the Cochrane Gambit, and we're going to see this is one of the earliest recorded Cochrane Gambits by Cochrane. So it's very, very special if you want something against the Petrov defence. Let's have a look. E4 by Cochrane. So Moshanda played e5. We have the dreaded Petrov defence. If you want to play an exciting game uh, yourself over the board or just for YouTube, this might be something <laughs> to check out as an unsound gambit. Uh, no, I mean as as a, as a as an amazing dynamic approach to playing this position after d6 instead of playing knight f3. <laughs> John Cochrane plays knight takes f7. And I, I think this was mentioned to me, and I thought, you, you cannot be serious. Uh, isn't it just giving up a knight for not too much? Yeah. If you, if you put this under engine inspection, this this is the key thing. If the opponent knows what they're doing here, okay, they take the knight off the check. The opponent here in 1848, actually, he retreated the king. Technically... Uh, it seems counterintuitive, but it might actually be best uh, for other moves here. Uh, although, you know, although bishop e6... <laughs> Stockfish is a bit confused by this position, let's say. It's actually confused by the natural-looking bishop e6. It thinks actually white's better, slightly. Uh, this is a shock horror, yes. After d4, it thinks white is better. Um, just to give some examples, say king f7. White, would white be better? Has white got a mobile center? Well, white's nicking that b7 pawn here, and there's certain compensation. It's about equal there, actually. If ever black, by the way, takes this point, I mean, it's going to lead to trouble. Queen h5 check and queen d5 check happening to pick up the knight. So anyway, it seems bishop e6, you might be shocked by this. I'm slightly shocked by this, but bishop e6 is almost giving white a good game. Um, the best move might be d5 and say takes, then just blocking up here. This might be the best approach. And the king can manually castle. This might be the best approach for those interested. Okay, but uh, in this game, uh, we see actually after bishop c4 check, king e8. Now this is is actually is actually technically it's actually very very interesting for white that uh, even engine check in this position it gives gives this as a small advantage <laughs> to white nearly sometimes it's 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 a very 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 turbulent can I emphasize enough uh, evaluation of the position here uh, so it's very very interesting what is actually going on. Uh, White, in this game, he didn't play knight c3, he played just castling. Uh, now we have c5. So that's the end of the theoretical little survey there. 
because I'm not sure we're going to revisit this gamut too much. Um, but it's very, very interesting. This position is very, very interesting. One of the reasons is this bishop, you know, is is pretty strong on that diagonal. Black has forfeited castling rights. Is going to have difficulty organizing his pieces. Uh, white plays very, very um, slowly now. Just h3, just taking away uh, the sting out of knight g4. Because in this position, without the defensive knight on f3, actually knight g4 and knight e5 could be a good, could have been a good hop, or even queen h4 later. So that's just casually ruled out. And now White's getting a, a mobile pawn center after f4. We have knight c6. Uh, if black dare take that king in the center, this is not going to end well. Just d3 here. Okay, so after f4, knight c6. We have knight c3 strengthening the control of light squares. a6. B5 might be useful for black. That's clamped down on. Queen e7. And now, this it looks as though, yeah, what is black actually doing with queen e7? Surely black can try and untangle the king side. It's actually a bit tricky here. Uh, let's just check this position. If bishop e7. But, you know, this might, this might be a reasonable idea just to try and develop... Uh, pieces, yeah. I mean, this this is a reasonable alternative. This is a little bit dodgy. Queen e7, basically. It seems intuitively dodgy that it's setting up a tempo gainer on knight knight d5. But in fact, there's something very interesting about this position. It looks as though that e file is fatal for black, and black did the humble retreat. Queen d8. If black was extremely cunning and resourceful. Scary positions would be uh, looked at in great detail, and there's a very scary position here after knight takes e takes. If this is looked at in great detail, black has at least two interesting resources in this position. Two. Uh, can you see what black can do if I give you five seconds? Two. There's two actually quite good moves. Okay, black could play queen f6, believe it or not. So ready to play knight e7 on the check. And if it takes here, then there's this queen d4 check. And uh, this this would be okay for black. And also there's queen f7. Just the pin there. And if uh, there, then there's bishop e7. Just having that pin against the bishop. And this is, this is okay for black. But yeah, in the game we see queen d8. And now white plays energetically with d4. Okay, he's opening up his own pieces. And now e5. Yeah, this is very energetic play to try and break through on the f file. This rook on f1 is automatically deployed, unlike these rooks, which are pretty lazy in this position, not not given, being given a chance to get into the game. But this rook on f1 has been made into a star on the f file after knight takes. Bishop takes d takes. Bishop takes c six, giving up the light square bishop. Check. And now, yeah, that was tricky to play this because a queen takes e five check. Uh, so that was important to take out that knight holding up e five. But now f takes, and this rook's a star now in the position, ready to come to f seven. So we see king c seven check. Now here, if bishop e seven, then bishop g five is pretty nasty for black. Uh, if black actually tries to hold things up with rookie eight, then just putting the battery pressure on. And then I think this is cracking now. This, we just crack black up with, yeah, this kind of thing. We're, we're gonna play rookie one anyway, so that's end of game there. Okay, so bishop e7 is not palatable um, because of bishop g5 basically. So we see actually the king kind of evacuating instead. So king b8 to the queen side. But now e6, this is a really troublesome move because it means actually the queen's got the e5 square. That's one thing. But also the bishop's got the f4 square and that's that's another thing to bear in mind. Uh, so can, can it actually be taken? Black played bishop d6 trying to neutralize this diagonal. 
Uh, if this pawn is taken, it looks like it should be pretty dangerous to take this. And the more significant one is actually Queen E5 check. Actually, just picking up this bishop might be sufficient. Yeah, this might be sufficient, and that's that's brilliant for White. With Queen B3 check coming in as well soon, so that's that's great to win that piece on route. Um, so that pawn clearly it's it's not to be taken. So Black does what is what is a sensible move, Bishop D6. But now Bishop G5, Queen B6. And now this is an interesting moment. A5 is played here. Best for Black is to play Queen B4, and this uh, I believe holds the balance. Let's check this just for a moment. This this is actually Queen B4, not just holds the balance. Black is actually is is actually a piece up here, and after E7, this is really scary. Uh, but rook a7, yeah, is is okay, and things are starting to look really up for black. Uh, that pawn is uh, a bit loose. The queen's holding e1, so there's no defense of that pawn. So e7 doesn't help particularly. So queen b4 is is the move that should have really, in theory, been played, but black slips up with queen c5. And there's a beautiful move here available for him, which was missed. Remember, it is only 1848. These are not like modern super grand monsters, but white has a beautiful tactical move in this position. If I give you five seconds, what would you play with white? So this wasn't played, but it's beautiful and crushing. So five seconds starting from now, what would you play? Okay, it looks as though the bishop's pinned, right? But actually, bishop f4 is lethal, so we're actually hitting the queen. So if takes, we can we can take the queen, and if our own queen is taken, then bishop takes d6. It's funny enough, the the king is getting mated there, is mated, um, and if well, there's nothing for black to do here in this position, because now uh, this is really dangerous. C3, and if takes here, check. And that's lethal. Black's going downhill. Well, I can take the queen after. So it's it's all pretty lethal here. Um, yeah, after bishop f4, it's it's pretty bad. So if bishop takes, queen takes. But uh, instead, actually, here b4 was played. But now, after threatening queen h2, white actually finds in this position. This tactical idea, bishop f4, in this position. And it's very, very good. Even here, with some differences in what's going on, this is still very, very good. Even though the queen's protecting the bishop now, can you see what white plays here, which is crushing? So, white's play, if I give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, Queen C5. Yeah, the bishop cannot be taken because Queen B6 will be mating. <clears throat> so Queen Queen B6 is the threat as well as taking the bishop. Black took the rook, but now Bishop takes D6 check, and this is big trouble. Black would have to give up the queen here. It doesn't help Queen B6 anyway. Queen b6 is happening if here queen b6 is uh, checkmate. And give, giving up the queen, we can actually just go queen b6 anyway. And that's pretty crushing. Yeah. So that's how uh, it ended, actually. Um, let's see, how did it end? It ended with. I'm having it played on to mate. After queen c5, queen takes, bishop takes d6 check. I think this was it here. Black resigned here. So the Cochrane Gambit is actually 
pretty dangerous. Black's best move, as, as mentioned earlier in the video, is probably to play d5. But there's a lot of fun to be had probably in Blitz and etc. if Black plays King e8 or Bishop e6, which look like plausible moves. But it gives White an interesting position where he's got a certain long term, long term trump card, this light square pressure. And moves like h3 are actually afforded because, you know, of f4 and e5 and activating White's rook on, on the f file with Black's rooks not so hot, but with White's rooks quite hot on the f file. So, a very, very interesting thing to maybe try out in Blitz. So, the inventor here in this earliest recorded game uh, shows the Cochrane Gambit. I hope you got something out of that, at least theoretically, entertainment-wise, etc. as well. Comments, questions, likes, appreciated. Thanks very much.